JavaScript is a function oriented language that gives a lot of freedom to the user. You can create a function dynamically, copy it to another variable or pass as an argument to another function and call from a different place later. Now closures in JavaScript are created every time a function is created at the function creation time. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka and in today's session we will discuss about closures in JavaScript. Now before we begin the session, let's have a look at today's agenda. So first we will have an introduction to closures and then we will see the different types of closures and what do they actually do. So we will talk about practical closures, then we will see scope chain and finally we will see how closures are used within a loop. Now before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel to stay connected. Also, if you are looking for an online training certification in web development, check out the link in the description box below. Now talking about closures in JavaScript, a closure is actually a combination of a function bundled together with references to its surrounding state that is the lexical environment. In other words, a closure provides you access from an inner function to an outer function's scope. Now most of the developers use closures in JavaScript consciously or unconsciously. It provides better control over the code when using them. Also, it is the most frequently asked question during any JavaScript interview. Now let's take an example and see how closure actually works in JavaScript. So here I'm creating a function as foo and inside this I am declaring a variable x with the value 10. Now I'm calling another function which is the inner function. So here we have the inner function and this will return the value x. Now the next thing to be returned is the function inner. So we have return inner here. Now let me take another variable as get function inner. So I'm taking this particular variable. Now this particular variable will actually call the function foo. Now in the form of a variable we will get the function foo here. Now let's print the values that we want to see. So we have console.log and we want to get the value for get function inner. Now you can print this as many times you want. It will basically return your function foo's value the number of times you are printing it. So now you can print it as many number of times as you want to. It will basically take the value from the foo function and return the value and print it the number of times you give the console.log. So let me copy this and let's print it once again. Now let me save this one. So this is the JavaScript file. We have the separate HTML file here where I have linked my example.js which is my JavaScript file here. So basically when I run this HTML code, it goes to this particular web page where I have welcome to Edureka as the H1 tag. So this is what I get to see. But what happens when I go inside the console of this page? For that we have to go inside console and when we go inside console you can see that the output that we have got here is 10 printed twice. Now what happened here is that you can access the variable x which is defined in function foo through the function inner as the later preserves the scope chain of enclosing function at the time of execution of the enclosing function. Thus the inner function knows the value of x through its scope chain. So this is exactly how you can use closures in JavaScript. So as I had written two console.log statements, so I have got the values printed twice here. Now let's move on to the next topic which is practical closures. Now closures allow you to associate the lexical environment with a function that operates on that particular data. Now this has obvious parallels to object oriented programming where objects allow us to associate the objects properties with one or more methods. Now consequently you can use a closure anywhere that you might normally use an object with only a single method. So now let's take another example for our practical closures here. So here I'll take another function and name it as make sizer and let me pass a parameter to be size. 
So the parameter inside this function is size. Now I will just return this particular function. So I have return function and here I have document dot body dot style and the font size. So I am taking this size in pixels. So I'll just write size and then I will attach this particular string here, which is px, which represents pixel. Now here I'll declare the variable of the size. So I have my first variable as size 12 equals to and I will take the function here, which is make sizer and I'll pass the value as a parameter inside this because here I've taken the function make sizer inside this. I've passed the parameter to be size. So I'm taking this variable named as size 12 calling the function and inside the function I'm passing the parameter which is basically the value of the size. So let's take another variable as size 14. Here I have make sizer again and I'm passing the value to be 14. Now you can pass as many variables or as many values as you want to. So now this example is generally attached as a callback. Now a single function which is executed in response to the event. So this is actually what callback looks like. So we have taken the function here. We are not directly calling the make sizer. We are returning the function value and inside this particular function value we are defining or we are printing out the size value along with px. So this was about the practical closures. Now let's move on to the scope chain. Now closures in JavaScript have three scopes. Now those three scopes are the local scope. Then we have the outer functions scope and finally the global scope. Now a common mistake is not realizing that in the case where the outer function is itself a nested function access to the outer functions scope includes the enclosing scope of the outer function effectively creating a chain of function scopes. Now let's take another example and understand the scopes here. So let's take a variable x and pass the value to be 10. Then we have a function here as sum. Now inside the sum function I'm passing a parameter as a. Then we have a return function with the parameter b and again another return function with the parameter c. Now this is actually our global scope here. And after this point we will have our outer functions scope. So let me just mention this here. So we have our outer functions scope. And in the outer function scope we will take another return function which is d. And finally we will have our local scope. So here we have another return function that will take the value as a b c d all the variables that I have declared. So in the local score we are returning the values of a b c d and x as well. Now let's print out the value here. So for that we have console.log and then sum 1 2 3 and 4. So what I'm doing here is passing the value for my sum function here. So inside sum I have the value as a and inside this I've passed the values as 1 2 3 and 4. So now let me save this one and then when we run the HTML file here. So inside the console you can see that the value has been printed as 20. Now how do we get this value as 20? So I have given the values as 1 2 3 4 inside the sum function which is actually this particular function. So I have the parameter as a. So basically the value of parameter a will become 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 which is equals to 10. So while I'm returning the values here I have the value of a as 10 and also I've declared the value of x as 10 in the global scope itself. So I have the value of my variable x here as 10 but there are no values specified for the functions or the variables b c and d. These are just return functions here which does not have any value specified. So we are considering this to be 0. So a is 10 and then we have three zeros plus x which is also equals to 10. So 10 plus 10 is equals to 20. So we get the value to be 20 here.
Now here we have used the anonymous function. We can also write this program without the anonymous functions. So these were our anonymous functions here because we didn't pass any value or anything. So now let's just take this as sum two. Then we have sum three and here we have sum four. Now before printing out all we need to do is pass the values to all these variables. So here we'll take another variable. So what we are taking is the variable s and inside the variable s we are calling the function sum and we are passing the parameter to be one. So now what happens is I've called this particular function and so I have specified the value to be one. So basically the value of a becomes one now. Now in the similar way what I can do is pass another variable as s1 and then take the value to be s of 2. Now what happens here is that it will pass this particular value here. This is not the sum function. This is actually our variable s here. In the similar way we can take another variable as s2 and then go to the previous variable which is s1 and assign the value as 3. And again take another variable as s3 and pass the value to s2 and the parameter value will be 4. Now all we need to do is just console s3 and we will get the result here. So what we will do is console.log and we are just printing out the value of s3. Now what will be the output of s3? So basically the s3 is printing out the value of s2 and then adding 4 to it. So it is like a chain here which is basically a nested chain here. The first step is taking the value 1 and then we're adding the value 2 and then 3 and then 4. So basically we're taking 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we're summing it up here. So now let me save this and when we go back we get the same answer here because all we have done here is remove the anonymous functions and used the nested chain instead. So here you can see this is a series of nested functions all of which have access to the outer scope of a function. So you can say that closures have access to all outer function scopes within which they were declared. So this was all about the different scopes in closure. Now moving on to the next topic we have closure within a loop. Now talking about loops you can use closures in JavaScript to store any anonymous function at every index of an array. So let's take an example and see how closures work within a loop. So first we will take a function outer. So the first one is function outer and inside this I'll take the array. So I'm declaring this array here but there's no specific value inside this array and then I'm taking a variable i and I'm passing my for loop here. So here I have for i equals to 0 and i less than 3 then i plus plus that is it's incrementing the value here. Now after this point what I'll do is I'll store the anonymous function here. So this is the part where I'm storing the anonymous function. So I have my array and I'm taking the variable as i. So here I'll take the function and return the value of i. So now this was the part where we are storing the anonymous function. But after that we have to return the array now. So here we will return the array. For that we have return array. And then we will take another variable as get array. And it will actually take the value of our outer function. So I'm passing this outer function here. And now finally I will take the console.log and take my get array which is passed as a variable and then pass the values for my array here. So in the similar way you can pass as many values as you want to. So I'll just copy this and print the second value to be 1 and then again I'll print another value to be 2. So my i value needs to be less than 3 here. Now let's save this. Now when we go to our console and run this again you can see that the value printed here is 3 and we have printed it three times. So what happens here is in three of these console.log what we have done is we have taken the variable get array but we have passed the value of the outer function here. 
Now what happens inside the outer function is we take the array. So it provides us the value of our array. So here I have 0 1 2. So the total length of my array is 3. So it's just passing me the value of my array or the total length of my array here. So this was all about closures in JavaScript and with this we have come to the end of our session today. I hope you have understood how closures actually work in JavaScript and what else can be done and what are the different types and how you can use it inside a loop as well. Now this is basically used to get a better control of the code that you're working on. Now don't forget to share your opinion in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!